and cheer her up here. Like, like I say, y'all. Uh, Enjoyed these Bible studies. And men's church has uh, done an excellent job presenting this. And you know, uh, different uh, different scripture. From, a lot of it from the Old Testament. You know, I've heard different people from some denominations said the Old Testament wasn't important. Well, really, from learning from these prophets, there were 17 uh, prophets. Uh, <coughs> Five major and twelve minor. We're gonna be at a minor prophets tonight. Him talking about the way of the times, uh, how the nations uh, reverence the Almighty God is how the nations prospered, and uh, so we can learn a lot. The big difference I tell people in America today, where we're at, we can read about what happens to people that are disobedient. These people were the people that's written about because we're in Habakkuk tonight, seven nine. Two by two books. It's not preached from a whole lot uh, in the la in the back of the, uh, of the Old Testament. But, uh, let's do uh, remember uh, their nation. I thank very much for the message he brought. Really, I thank the Bible for pointing out to believers we look look to in uh, that message. It would be offensive to a lot of people. I tell you, uh, I'm, I'm talking about people that don't want to face the truth. <laughs> Amen. I've never seen a time in a day we live uh, you can become an unpopular person uh, stating uh, uh, how you believe. I'm talking about going back to scriptures. I worked in the union for 20 something years. I quit it when they started telling me how to vote. I said, you ain't telling me nothing. I walked away. I had a farm to come to. I was just working because of the insurance. But I've talked to union people today some good friends, but they really disagree with me on who I'm going to vote for because it's about the unions. Yeah. Uh, the dollar bill, the dollar bill has sent a many man to hell. And I'm, I'm just saying the lust of it, the dollar ain't going to hurt you and help a lot of things. St. Jude's, I know a farm that sold this in Marshall County this week, I heard the proceeds and went to St. Jude's. Yeah. Hallelujah and amen. amen. $640,000. So you know something about it too. Yeah. I, I, this is all second hand, but See, so something be glorified. I mean, and uh, you know, there's too much uh, negativism. Uh, when I speak of prayer, I want to be uh, optimistic about the king that we serve. Uh, you know, these uh, these two uh, chapters tonight, even the, the two the two minor prophets that presented this, uh, in my uh, Bible's got a lot of information. Uh, and they say very little is known about them. One of them's out of the tribe of Levi, uh, Habakkuk was. He is in the time around 604 uh, B.C. Uh, the country. Uh, we're going to be talking about two different things now. We're going to be talking about nations, a nation, and then we're going to be talking about a person in the difficulties in the day of face. So, Lord, would you help me tonight glorify you? What I say, I pray, would be uh, to, to lift up this congregation. And people, help us, Lord, uh, to be what we're supposed to be uh, in a loving way, kind, <coughs> most of all, Lord, uh, to uh, present the truth. Thank you, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name, our Savior. Amen. Amen. This week I was in a hurry. I had a neighbor come rolling in. I need to be somewhere 30 minutes before, but we're good friends. And we sat down and got to talk. We just want to talk about the rapture. And we spent about an hour and a half. Uh, and he was going to make sure he was clear. And another thing I say is, uh, uh, I learned a lot, Jamie, from, when you presented the book of Revelations. I've been in four studies of Revelations in the last 20 years. Uh, but if you if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you ain't got anything to worry about. Mm -hmm. The main thing is to get our loved ones in the fold. And we had a good time about that. And he left there rejoicing in the Lord. He's got his marching orders in front of him, but he's got some loved ones that hadn't, uh, that hadn't got it right. And, you know, the only way I've got it right is what God's Word says. He's got it right. So we went to it. Just like tonight in this book of Habakkuk, it talked about, I thought, well, all the people get these two. But disappointments are inevitable, and their curse is a choice. 
Well, you know that title itself right there, you spend half the night. We're not going to spend no half the night, I guarantee you that. Talking about the disappointments. What it's saying there, they're going to come. They are. But then, by the disappointments, discouragement is a choice if we think positive, give God the glory. He sees down the road, we can't, I can't see my hand in front of my face. Jimmy, yeah. Are you going to write lesson? Uh, we we won't do this in the night. I spent <laughs> no Thursday on it. What number are you on? I'm on 20. Huh? It's 19. Well, we're going to be on 20 tonight because I spent four hours on it. Hey, that's good because Jamie will do 19 next week. I've done got my lesson done. <laughs> well, the thing about the list, I mean, you know, I've been sitting for every one of these. <clears throat> Jamie, is that all right for you? That's perfectly fine. Well, I'm going to tell you what, this was meant to be. I'm a person, there's no coincidences in God. Amen. And uh, I apologize to you, James. I apologize to the church, but I'm about a good prayer keeping up. Well, I give, I give a couple of some scriptures. You know what? I've heard that man right there saying, I've heard, I know Brother Robert, he had a message all lined up, and God said, no, that's not it. Well, on this here, we'll get it next week. Uh, maybe it's meant for Jamie to do this one. Yeah. I'm, hey, day jam, I don't make no apologies for what God did. I'll tell you, I, I've done that. And he did, he know where he said, you got to apologize to me. And to me, God. But, some of y'all read the letter. I mean, I know y'all studied it, and, and forgive me, but I hope... We'll burn it out because really, you don't have to study this to really get to it. Disappointments. I asked everyone in here, and I'm not going to go to it, but how many of y'all have ever been disappointed in life? <laughs> it was not. Yes. And it talks about that in there. The writer, oh, with horror, we thought we might have been years ago. And sometimes, uh, as I read this, again, that a life us often doesn't turn out the way you think it should. Now, this is simple, pretty simple reading right here. Even though uh, I, I know a lot of y'all put a lot of effort in, forgive me. In fact, it rarely does. It doesn't turn out. If you're like most people, your hopes and expectations always, almost always expect, exceed your reality. Opportunities that you were counting on don't turn out the way that you thought they would. People... Here we go. People that you thought, see, we got opportunities, we got people that you thought you could depend on ended up letting you down. Even the plans and expectations that you designed for yourself have been frustrated. It's all very disappointing. That one thing, the plans we designed for ourselves. See, God sometimes has a different, He has a different plan. Uh, everything I thought I'd be at 18 year old, uh, uh, it didn't happen. Uh, I mean, going forward uh, to where I'm at today, and that's good, a lot of it is, because really, everything was about me, I'm 18 to 24-year-old man, the boys, buddies I run with, uh, it was all about us, and, uh, uh, and the Lord janked me, not my neck, uh, but God knows for everyone of y'all in here, including myself, what tomorrow holds, he does. And just like John just shared with a good friend that had worked hard all his life, retired, and here he was hit with this. We hear that all the time. Yeah. It just breaks your heart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bad things happen to good people all the time. Yeah. And this lesson sort of about people questioning. We're going to be in Psalms a little later on. But half of it's going to be talking about a nation that's just about like where we're at today. The people were doing everything under the sun. And they knew better. And God was going to get their attention. And he sent these men, and I'm going to read out the verse right there. I mean, if you read that title there, and, and really there's more to it there, about the fig tree, and the fig tree was really uh, something they counted on for food, like we do corn here, or soybeans, or livestock, or garden. But both the fig tree may not blossom. If they don't blossom, there ain't going to be no fruit. If you got beans, you got anything, there's no bloom on it, you ain't going to have nothing but vines. But if it does not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, which it won't be. Yet, yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And 
A lot of people say, well, what's there to rejoice about? There's nothing to eat. But there's more to it. And if you read on, because there's more to them verses there, and we'll get to them here in just a second. But keep in mind the disappointments and how you overcome them. And I'm going to read these a few verses here, and then i got some, some of the ladies that are going to read when we get in the book of Psalms. Turn to Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Like I said, the birth, when you start out in the first chapter, the first verse of Habakkuk, it sets a tone for the whole thing. The burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. Mm -hmm. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou will not hear, even cry out unto thee of the violence, and thou will not save. So right there he was whining. You know what I'm saying? Uh, why? And the burden. But the Lord had a message. And we get over here in that chapter 3, because we're not going to be in half as much as we are going to be in the book of the Psalms. In the 17th verse and 18th verse, although, see, it's, it, the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in their vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, so the olive's going to fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. No words. It looks like the food supply, as they looked at, is going to be pretty limited. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. But well, what's there to joy about right there? Is anybody between the lines, what do you see? God is still in control. Amen. Okay. It's still about folks going to heaven. All right. And those Old Testament days. Faith was going to have to play in if that's going to be, if that's going to make it, was it not? Faith. Amen. The Lord God, Jehovah, is my strength, and he will make my feet like a hand's feet, and he will make me walk upon my hand places to the chief singer on my string instrument. So the Lord God is his strength. What tomorrow? You know, in a nation we're in today, and I just went to a, a, a cattleman's meeting last night, and he was giving the outlook. The pros and cons. Did you know about 75, 80 percent of the United States is under drought? Now you tell the people in North Carolina, and then there, but was washed away. And here we got. I got seven inches out of that, but it's as dry as dust as that pick. Who did it go to? And I got three inches ten days before. Ten inches in two weeks, and it's dry as bone. But our nation is under severe drought. The nation of plenty can feed itself. Agricultural people say we've got the seed made, we can make it through this, we can make it through that. But if the Lord don't give the increase, we're in trouble. You know what I'm saying? So are, are we thankful even as a nation in America? I hear very few farmers ever say, thank God. I really do. Which I'm not in the farming industry like I used to be, just cattlemen. Uh, I don't hear it. Used to. I, myself, I know if there's going to be an increase, my belief was Almighty God was going to be the one to give it. Uh, but a nation that thought everything was in order, we know that they were getting ready to be overrun, they had men. Uh, it goes on and says right here in that uh, later on in these verses, what has happened to Judah before the Babylonians invaded? What happened in, in, in Zebekiah? Well, we got to go to Zebekiah. See, it jumps around in Zebekiah. Uh, chapter 1, it's right behind Habakkuk. 2 and 6, it said, it's right behind Habakkuk, Habakkuk then they got the three chapters. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, said the Lord. What is consuming? I get it away. That's right. Yeah, consume, it, consume everything on your plates, all down. Yeah. said, I will consume all the things from off the land, said the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling box. With the wicked, I will cut off man from off the land, said the Lord. I will, I will also stretch out my hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place and from the name of the chamberlains with the priest. And them that worship from the host of heaven upon the housetops, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord, and they swear by Malchim. And them that are turned back from the Lord, those that are, have not sought the Lord nor inquired for him. Looks like it's pretty well taking everybody into the equation there, is it not? And you say, what has happened? 
They were a nation that was being invaded and conquered there at that time. Uh, it said, you know, Josh, Joe Osher, he was a, a king, uh, things fared under, and it points out that this was the reign in between. Uh, Zebaniah raised his voice against idolatrous practices that took time for every prevalent. These deliverances of the prophet had no doubt a decided influence upon the work and reform of what Josh had done. Talk about idols up here, people say, there's no idols in, in their nation today. They are too. Amen. Anything we put before God, I've had them. You know? Uh, you know, uh, the churches we look at today, uh, you know, uh, uh, I talked to a man uh, that done my grandson's wedding. Uh, he preaches at Kevin Baptist Church. He's about 29 year old. Uh, he was a high school uh, classmate of my, of my grandson's uh, wife and, and, and her and her mother and her family was fine Christian people. And I told him, you know, we got to talking about God called man at that age. Pretty fan, ain't it, Brother Robert? Yes. 28, 29 year olds? Yes. It is, isn't it? And, you know, uh, someone's going to have to fill the shoes. We got two in here, 70. Brother Robert, mid 70s. Brother might be 74 long. Doug, 67. Yeah. Who's going to, I'm thinking about it. We, we need these young ones coming on. And you wonder, you know, even though we even the middle aged and older, a lot of them quit because of, of the pressure they was under from everybody else's problems or from hurting somebody's feelings by preaching the truth. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> That's one thing I'll tell you. I've never seen no one in the Bible that God apologized for what he said to me. That's how that's how blunt it is. That's right. I was one of them people as a basketball coach, I have to talk to you different than do the others because you're hard headed as I understand. I mean you take it, and that's like people that want to take up issues, and all it ain't that way about same-sex marriage, life, new you, and the one. You can go right there in the Bible, say, you believe in the Almighty? And if they don't believe in the Almighty, you ain't going to get very far with them. Then you can just right. say, well, you know what I'm saying? But what's bad, a lot of people claim to be church people that don't even agree with what the Bible says. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about big percentages. And I'm not here to deny get off on that, but I'm just saying, I'm amazed where did you come from? Did you ever pick up your Bible and read it? And I'm going to tell you, you got you to you pound this thing. Yeah. Read it and read it and read it. Because uh, my people brain can't consume it all. I'm thankful that I have a church that is putting out the truth that should be out there like my, our pastor. Because my, my cousin's church Split down the middle and separated because the families wanted the church to accept their children that were gays and lesbians. And so the other half of the church left because they wouldn't accept their children. But sin, sin is God's eyes, and I, and I have to be tell myself that. Sin, sin. And the Lord loves us all, but the, you know, we have to repent. That's right. and, and, and the biggest thing I found talking about it, we had to stand on just talking about this nation here. Israel knew right and wrong. America knows right and wrong. Amen. I don't know very many people who can't read. When I was growing up, there was a lot of men when I was a little boy. So many men in their 80s, they, they barked all their lives. And lots, a lot of them in their neighborhood could not read or write. Right. They could. They were good men, worked hard. They had to depend on what someone told them. If the preacher preached them here, they couldn't read it. They took you at your word, your word, your word. Right. Uh, and uh, but the thing about it, the simple thing, I understand one thing: there's one way to heaven, that's through Jesus Christ. Right. Some people say, "Well, if you believe in God, that's all it is." No, oh. God is through Jesus Christ. Well, y'all, you don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I know what the Bible says. That's right. Amen. You got to accept Jesus Christ. That's the intercessory. And you got to believe in the resurrected Savior too. Amen. And. Uh, I mean, you run into people know they won't trip. I mean, people hit me up and all, and I, and, and you know, out of a loving way, it's it's uh, just like Israel at that time. The reason they were being run over and they they were conquerors in David's time. Yeah, it's fine. They were the conquerors, 
And even Solomon's time, the nations brought and fought out the goods to them. You know, but then, the, then everything changed. They didn't enlarge. They didn't get no smarter. They got really not real wise because they did not honor Almighty God. John, John 14, 6, that bear, what you What's it say? I am the truth, I am the truth, I am the way, the, the truth, and the life. The no man can ever know about me. me. That's right. And, 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 and that's pretty simple. Well, here, we're going to turn over and get right there in Zebedee, talking about the turn. The trouble said, what has happened to Judah before the Babylonians invaded? Uh, they were going to be consumed. Mm -hmm. All their possessions were going to be consumed. You take the beat of, of their lifestyle, everything consumed. You know, that happens this day and time right now, Jimmy, just like you were talking about in North Carolina. There's people out there, they lost everything they had. Yeah. I mean, they just, all they got to do is look back and say, why does God do this? God's done this throughout time. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. And you know the devastation. I, I, I know where some fine Christian people were hit during that. You know, uh, yeah. uh, well the Bible talks about the perilous times. I mean, you know, all, all the world <laughs> is showing things that are happening. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's part of the curse of sin for the whole world. Ain't no respect of persons. And nature, That's right. nature pays the price too. <laughs> yep. Uh, even the wildlife, the animal needs sinning. You know. That's one thing I'm looking for to heaven, seeing the lamb and in a, in a lion laying together like they did. Do yeah. you believe that? Yeah, I believe that. Sure. That's what the Bible said. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. What are they going to eat? I said, there they're eating graze like a cow. Uh, ain't that something? Yeah. See that? See, everything paid the price for her greatest grandparents' yeah. sin. <coughs> you know what like Carol said a while ago? Going after she said that about the guy in the legends, we had this man come in our church on Sunday morning. Never been there before. Six three, probably weighed about six sixty. <laughs> and one of the women come and said, Brother Barbara, you need to get back there and get that man out of church. And he's back there playing with them little girls. Mm. I look back there and had two or three girls around me. I go back there, I said, Can I take you outside? He said, Sure. I get outside and I said, uh, I think maybe you might be after these little girls in the wrong way. I'm going to ask you to leave. He said, you look at me and tell me to leave? I said, yes, sir. I am waxing bold and I'm telling you, you're not coming back in. Boy, he could have crushed me, but I stood up like Brother Mike. Honey, he stood up here in front of, not on the camera, in this church, and stood on the trees. If you're standing on the truth, the Lord is back you. I'm here today. That's right. Absolute truth. You know, and, and I'm thankful for that. Just like in this lesson today, the nation was paying the price. They were getting ready to be carried. I mean, Judah and Israel, the two, the nation, you know, been split for years. Ten tribes and the two. Right. And uh, uh, some of them prospered and they had uh, righteous kings. Hey, leadership has a lot to do. If you don't believe it, read the first, second kings, first, second chronicles, and the fool there. That's it right. always starts with a leadership, no. If That's they got right. a king said he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, yeah. the country prospered. If he was evil, the price would be paid. I mean, it was all the way through there. That's how it was. And that's like today. Leadership, even their nation today, a man that reverences God or whatever, it will go a long way with the people. You know, because a lot of people have to be led. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I hope everyone here's got you know enough background. You can pick your Bible up and see. Here's what the Lord expects of me: try to be the best I can, right. uh, not uh, run over through somebody to get where I might want to be. Uh, help them if you can, pick them up, uh, tell them about the love of Jesus Christ, and and it's all about faith. You know, is there anything wrong with having dreams? Because you point out here, it isn't. I mean, you may put that. Said, what hopes do you have for your life? How many of y'all here ended up in an occupation they thought they'd be him and got out of high school? <laughs> Anybody? Yeah, the two jobs I wanted, I ended up with both of them, believe it or not. Did you? I wanted to work this co op, I wanted to work all my granddad's footsteps, and I did both of them. Well, good. All right, see? And, uh, and some things, uh, 
you know, it said what opportunities for licensure for situations are you constantly reaching for? I think most of us here today have done reached. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're not looking to go. Uh, I mean, you know, this spot in a career, but if there's a bunch of young ones, it'd be a different story. You know, uh, here's what I say. I, uh, when I, <laughs> I had no education, senior in high school. Done a little, I had a teacher write my yearbook, most wasted effort of any student I ever taught. What you're saying, you can done it. Been so much more. All I want to do is have a good time. And but later when I got in the workforce, I found out you're gonna to have to you got the opportunity to learn something. And I went to blueprint reading school and thing and, and got an apprenticeship program and, and learned and it's hard. I didn't understand all what that meant, but I did understand if you could do it and somebody else couldn't, you'd be in the mammon and laid everybody else off because it was the workforce and we went in it. I mean it was bad and the pay was terrible. But anybody trying to better their self through education or on a job training, most people on a job training, failures, don't, don't failures, we learn from them. Amen. Farming, I've learned from it. I mean, failures, uh, everything. Uh, you know, sometimes I wish I'd handle this different, you know, and as we get older, hope we do. Uh, but, you know, uh, some people are jealous because someone will be able to take a situation and make more of it. I'm happy for anybody to think better their self. I am. Uh, better their self. And don't let them forget who helped them better their self. The Lord gave them the knowledge and gave them the skill. See, when I had that surgeon, they put my hand back together and they told me I'd never be able to grip a Coke can. And, and I believe them because, man, I had it all cut off the skin on the bottom. They pulled my tendons all the way down. My nerves were gone. I had a knot big as a, sock, a tennis ball. What was for years. And that guy, he was an atheist. I didn't know what Monica Powell told me later. She worked for him. And I had to go to him. I had a good purpose. He was a Christ, Christian man. Boy, uh, purpose pain. Because he asked me, he said, what's one word for purpose? Well, I was sitting there searching. I was trying to come up with a big word. He said, well, it's four later. I'm still searching. He said, pain, dummy. And I got after he got to hold my hand and try to break it loose. Six months later, I knew exactly what he was talking about. But we got there. But this man, you can give God glory in anything. Amen. And he come, and, and after about a year, things are getting better. <clears throat> I went out there to Mayfield three days a week, two or three hours a day, trying to get my hand where to use it. Anyway, <laughs> went in there one day and shook his hand and gripped it. He said, well, what's happened to you? And I said, well, like it's been old Wendell, been working. He said, well, I've done a real job, didn't I? And I said, let me tell you, the good Lord is what turned this around. He said, I don't get no credit. And I said, I give you credit. The Lord gave me the ability to do it. He said, I've never met anybody like you. And I thought, well, I am. I'm giving the Lord credit. And you know, I, after the years, I mean, I still ain't no failing with it, but I've done. The Lord blessed me. Here's the thing about it. I learned from that. Don't take nothing for granted. Amen. That's right. Don't take anything for granted. I mean, you limbs. I mean, you know, uh, and even the ability to even speak for the Lord, I mean, in, in front of a group of teenagers or, or people my age, you know, uh, the disappointments in life have given us the opportunity to share with people. Some, most people don't want to be around somebody who has been hunky dory because they've been struggling and said, what's that guy who you know about? No, they're going to be able to pay the life bill, take the car payment, they're getting ready to pull them out of his house. They, they don't know how to relate to that when their thing's been good, but when it's struggling, well, how'd you get by? Mm -hmm. Well, by the skin of your teeth, as I was saying, is now growing up, you heard that, the skin of your teeth. But there's one thing about it. A relationship with Almighty God is the most important thing anybody could have for Jesus Christ. Yeah. And he's done paid the price. That's the amazing thing. And the day and time we live in, that's why I said there's never been a better time to be a Christian because this world is full of wealthy people that are spiritually, well, they ain't bankrupt because you got to have something to lose it. A lot of them never had it. Right. Spiritually empty. Because they never did have the comfort to come from Jesus Christ. Can't you think back in your own life when it seemed like the whole world's against you? And everything seemed like you failed. Satan's convinced you failed. The Brother Mike says that. He talks all the time. He's always telling you. He told me today about something. And I finally said, get behind me. Yeah. You know, it's over something I've been praying about. And the answer was no. I got the answer today in the mail. <laughs> later, later, 
I've been two years waiting for this answer, and it came. No. <clears throat> but I prayed to God. God said I was going to quit asking him about it. Let it be your will. Yeah. So that's his will. You don't need to know what it's about. But I'm just saying, I thought it was better me, but the answer was no. So that's okay. It's better. Hey, there's something. Like I have to look into something bigger. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Think about that. This man talking to the neighbor and his wife, he's worried about her salvation. What's more important to him? And he's really come about her salvation. Your children, your grandchildren. I think that's the only reason I'm here today. There's something maybe I hadn't got in. Uh, I would rejoice in the Lord. I, would, how many, I mean, really have joy in your salvation. There's so much uncertainty today. I got my tax bill this time. It shot up. Yeah. I dropped about half of everything I own on the farm bureau that it paid for. And I got some bit wet in three months. I was back towards that and about 20% higher. And I thought, ah. And you know what my wife said? Get rid of all that stuff. Well, as a lifetime accumulated, she didn't want me to get rid of it. Well, I'm too hard headed to do that. But what I'm getting at, you look. You know, when I come in here Sunday morning, I know very much you've seen these people come in. And keep coming in. That young couple we was talking about, he went and visited back there. There's two I didn't get to even go shake hands with they come in later. That's what it should be Amen. about. My time in life, your, most of y'all's time in life, is about the hereafter and the people we help. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. The Lord is my strength. It's pretty hard to say the Lord's your strength when your wife's walked out on you, your husband's walked out on you, you got thawed. I got thawed. Said I'd get, use up my use of this. I'm too old. I mean, from the company I was with 40 years, said, uh, the times have left you behind. And I said, you're absolutely right. Because I'm not bowing down to what y'all want to do. And I'm one of the few people brashing up to tell you what I think about it. And I've talked about it in a Christian way, not a word that I wouldn't have spoken here. But that's okay. But trust him because how many of y'all have been here, and I've had it at times, Satan, hey, does he know what he's doing? Look at that statement. Does he know what he's doing? Mm -hmm. That's just like Brother Robert asked us to pray for him at a church. <clears throat> you know, I hate to see you go if you went, but I need you to do what the Lord told you to do. Yes, sir. I heard Brother Mike say, I'm not going to stay a day. Uh, we, we've known each other for a long time, and the Lord's blessed us here, and I hope he's, uh, we have, I hope uh, many more years, but I don't even know how much longer I can stand up here. But when we get to Psalm, the nations, we need to pray for America. Here's what's going to prevail. Here's what's going to prevail. Amen. They're going to defeat their enemies, if we're with them or not. Yep. And no doubt in my mind, they're Amen. going to prevail. You say, well, how do you know? Well, the Bible says they are. Right, right. Yeah. How many of y'all here understand 80% of what's in the Bible? I don't. <laughs> Everybody said, well, why don't you? Well, gosh, you read it and you do it. I said, well... It's just it's too big for me. But I can understand the plan of salvation. I can understand the Roman road. I can understand Jesus preaching love, kindness, extension. Things that I can even do, I can understand it. And that's what makes a difference in the people around me. Amen. You know what I'm saying? I can't pronounce them big words. I don't spend no time on it. Never have, never will. But I love that. The favorite verse I always say is 13th verse, the 10th chapter. And I've seen more prisoners look at that and look up and smile. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now who's good enough, white, black, yellow, red, male, female, whatever. Whosoever. And I believe that. Yes. I'm amazed that some of these preachers on TV now tell 99% of the Christians are lost. I thought, well, I don't know how many might be lost, but they're actually Christians. They're not lost if they accept Jesus Christ. But, I mean, you get people on there, uh, I just don't understand. But as we get down to it, Shannon, I want you to read how many of y'all here like the book of Psalms? This, it's a roller coaster ride, isn't it? A roller coaster ride. It's praising God one minute and every minute like us. Just like us. Just like us. Like, why? My enemies are out to consume me. Mm -hmm. David. Would you, you, would you read that, Shannon? Yeah. It's uh, chapter 73. Verses 1 through 12. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They 
are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasses them about as a chain, violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness, they have more than a heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression, they speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Okay, thank you, Shannon. That's a mighty powerful reading right there. And I think everybody in this building at times probably looked at that and said, Why? Huh. Why do I have to struggle? I, I, I don't ask you about myself as much as I do if other people are struggling. I mean, you know, I've struggled all my life in certain ways, but the Lord's been good to me. I've overcome. Really, as, as the world looked at it, I told a man, he said, if you could describe yourself, we was in the meeting, and they wanted to describe yourself. I said, if the world looked at me, I'd be a total failure. I mean, you know, much money as I handled in my life, I'm talking about farming, this, or that, and yon. One year you make it, next year you lose it all. This, or that, and yon. I mean, but the way I look at it on the spiritual side, the Lord's been gracious enough to me. He's tucked me. He's, he's whipped me. He's uh, let me know what matters. Uh, looking at other people, I think all of us are guilty sometimes. Envy said, how? And I, I seen it. Hey, back in the city, see, they like to sold me out for $3,500 in 1978. Government did not bail people out back then. <laughs> Carter had a big embargo, corn 90 something cents a bushel, soybeans 3 cents, cattle 11 cents, tobacco 30 cents a pound. Everything fell half. It was worth paying that. And uh, I had some good friends that got sold out. Uh, but, that's the type of life I look at now. I thought, you know, uh, how did you overcome? Well, that time I turned my life back on the Lord. That's about the time, and it wasn't easy. I didn't, ha I didn't have a, a duck laying golden eggs, but He gave me a strong back. And you work two jobs. Is what I tell people: you work two and three. But found time. That's when I. Really, major. I didn't even realize what being a Christian was. That's 26 year old. I knew what saying was, but being a Christian, when you're concerned about other people, your own kids were born, you know, and you grow. But if, if you look at that, their pride compasses them about. Why does the Lord say he hates a proud person? Does he not? I don't think there's nothing wrong. Anybody trying, I mean, everybody trying to do their best. And, uh, but some people, you know, uh, look what I've done. You know what? I, the only next breath I tell people, I draw is, is, is by the grace of God. Uh, this here could fill in, uh, and even how to, to ask God, is there knowledge in the Most High? <laughs> mm -mm -mm. How far can they be from knowing about Him? The one that spoke the universe is in, we can't even imagine. We got, have, you, have you looked up on a clear night? Amen. And this just, we were seeing a little. I thought, my land. <laughs> you get to thinking too much, so I have to just shut, shut my mind off because I can't comprehend. These are ungodly people. Our world, our nation is full of them today. <coughs> America is. Uh, we got leadership for uh, Who's got, you got Blendy, you got them other verses right there? It's just, surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of my children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their sin. Too painful. How many, I mean, your own life. Sometimes it's painful to have to admit to the truth about the, her loved ones, you know what? Even about yourself. <laughs> You know, it is. Uh, it's painful. I mean, you know, and uh, uh, I mean, I, I'm told all the time you're living in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Well, uh, 
I'm, my mind might be, but I'm here. Uh, people have the needs uh, as never has been before, their children. Or, uh, I've always said, and I'll be the fact, my children, my grandchildren, they think different than I do. Every generation thinks a whole lot different. And a lot more ditch tea is a whole lot, the key word is about yourselves. I see that. Yeah. I'm having a big family, I see it. A lot of people, don't you be talking about, I, I'm not talking about nobody, I'm talking about mine, on my end, about self. Uh, the rest of you got that last part right there, and I'm gonna be a uh, piece of no. <clears throat> Pretty powerful right there. Put all the trust, even though all the anguish uh, and all that uh, they even said they were foolish, they were ignorant. Said even the beast before thee, but then I only said thou was holding me with the right hand. The Lord has helped us through it. It's closing. There's two questions last there. Have you ever been tempted to give up of, of, of discouragement? If so, what time? What was the time like for you? Anybody here ever had a time? You've that's ready to give up on the Christian walk. <coughs> I know a lot of people have. Yeah. I mean, because they were devastated. And who am I? I? I didn't walk in their shoes, and I'm not judging in no way. But I know I was a time in my life I was ever going to get closer to God or run. And I've never been closer to God than I was during the 10-year period. And really, to be honest, I don't want to go through it again because it was a devastating... I mean, being honest... Nowhere to turn. I didn't even own a car. <laughs> sold every tractor I had, sold everything. Amen. Keep it farm. But you know what? I got closer to the Lord. Amen. Kathy's my Sunday school class. They was a big part of it, her in that class. I had about, well, was about 20 of us in there, 24, and they treated me. Uh, they adopted me and I was their teacher. I mean, I'm just talking about Christian people pick each other up. Amen. This church, if someone down, we're the ones supposed to pick them up. Not the government. Yes, sir. And we wrote, and think about it, we never forget it, and we're ready to pick somebody up. Hey, I've been there. I know what you're going through. But you know what? God's good. All the time. All, all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it. I, I even say some of y'all what some of y'all have to go through. And, and I hate it for you. And and I and I had to say all the good things, and I, that's one of my favorite verses. All good things work together to them that love the Lord. And at times right. I say, What good can I I mean being honest, yeah. but I know and say, God help me. So, thank y'all getting this up. Really, we're the most blessed people on the face of the earth if you got your trust in Almighty God. For my... Thank you, Jimmy. Good job, Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to finish reading what Shannon started as we close in Psalm 73. You stopped at verse 12, right, little sister? Yes. Psalm 73, verse 13. Verily, I cleanse my heart in vain, wash my hands in innocency. In other words, frustrated. Amen. For doing good. Yep. For all the day long, I've been plagued and chastised or chastened every morning. And in verse 15, <clears throat> he's going to tell some people off. You ever want to do that? 
Yeah. Yeah. Mr. You're hurting? Look what he says. If I say I'll speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. He held his tongue. Yep. We don't like doing that. We bite them in two, but we. <laughs> yeah. My tongue got a lot of scars on it. Amen. <laughs> when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I. This is so powerful, Brother Robert. This yeah. tells you something about fellowship in the house of God, what it does when you're about ready to do the wrong thing. What does it say? Yeah, Until right. I went to the sanctuary of God. Amen. Right. That's where we're at. To encourage each other to not give up and don't get bitter. Until I went to the sanctuary of God, then I understood therein. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou cast them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment. They are utterly consumed with tears. Yeah. As a dream when one awakes, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Mm. Thus my heart was grieved. Yeah. And I was pricked in my reins. Yes. How foolish, or so foolish was I and ignorant. I was a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I'm continually with thee. Thou hast held me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel. Afterward, receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? There is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart fail. But God is the strength of my heart. Amen. And my portion forever. Amen. For lo, that are far from thee shall perish. Yeah. Thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee. In other words, worshiping other gods. Yes. But it's good for me to draw near to God. I put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Amen. When you get to the as, as dark as it can possibly get. God's going to show his light somehow. Mm -hmm. He sure yeah. is. Yeah. I'll share it very, very briefly again because it, it means so much to me when I, uh, I was going to take my own life. Really? I sure was. Yeah. We thought we were going to lose our home. I sat down in front of my house <laughs> on the flower bed and I thought we got old 78 Grand Prix here that the top on it's a raggy and this and that, and I, and I was, it wasn't, we wasn't working, you know, us, we worked our whole life. And I thought, you know, the best thing I can do is hop in this car and go down and hit that bridge on said road and run the wide open. And my wife mm -hmm. and little two year old girl be a whole lot better off. And I wrestled all night long, you know. Now, 15 years before that, a red headed man in Clark River Baptist Church would preach a revival. He came to my house because I didn't come forward, and he led me to Jesus. Amen. Now, that was 15 years before that. So, moving back again 15 years, I mean forward, and I'm thinking about taking my life. And I laid down and slept on it. My wife and little girl had no clue what I was about to do. I woke up the next day. And I thought, oh my, when, every time I read joy in my salvation, it speaks to me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I gathered up my wife and my little girl, and I said, if we got to live in a pup tent, yep. me and you have our salvation, and we got a two year old that has hers right now. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God, for not letting me hurt myself. Yes. We drove to the bank to walk in with a piece of paper and the man was sitting behind my desk because I wanted to live me the Lord 15 years before. I never saw him again in my life or before then. Wow. Amen. Amen. That was the light after the darkness. Yes, sir. He said, what are you doing here? I laid that paper down and he said, God put me here to help young struggling families to make it. Amen. That's a God, that's a God thing. You can't that's right. You can't invent those things. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, so in other words, I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still here. Amen. But you can't get so down. And I think a lot of it is Brother Jimmy's pride. Yeah. You know, I'm going to lose everything, be embarrassing to my family. And right. Mom and Dad right down the road didn't know a thing about it. Yeah. And my church family didn't know anything about it. See, pride keeps us quiet sometimes when we need help. Yeah. yeah. Amen. You're right. And I was guilty of that. <clears throat> but I spoke that tonight to make sure that if you're watching tonight through Facebook or YouTube, don't you dare give up. Right. 
Don't Amen. give up. If you want to, I understand that. It gets dark and gets hard. <laughs> Satan's on your back criticizing you. But if you are a believer, I promise you, he will work out all things for good. But do not destroy yourself. Don't hurt yeah. yourself. Don't you give up. Yeah. Don't let Jesus Christ waste what he did for you. Amen. He did it for you. He did it for me. He loves you. Yeah. No matter what condition you're in, you need him as your Savior. You need to ask him into your heart tonight. I can't promise you everything will be perfect, but you will be fortunate, blessed, graced to have one that's perfect living inside of your heart. Right. And he will guide you in the right way every time, every decision. And we got a world right now that needs somebody to tell somebody the right thing. Amen. Amen. And it's Jesus. Amen. You need him. Ask him into your heart. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, God, I thank you, uh, Father, for all. But every one of them, there's not just my story, but every person and every few here tonight, there's a miracle in their story somewhere. Yes. Whether you've saved them, changed them, saved their children, saved their lives, saved their soul. And God, we just thank you. We can count on your word. When everything else you said passes away, you said, my word, my word is going to last forever, God. I know work if we look at any other word beside here. Forgive us when we do. Yeah. Be with that one right now. They struggle. They can harm in their self. I'm a testimony that God, it can't work out. But don't make them look at me, God. Make them look at you. Yeah. We love you. Thank you for giving us hope that we can turn around and give hope to a lost and dying world around us. Yeah. Watch over us. Bring us back to your house Sunday. We celebrate a great man's day. And today we celebrate you. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.